Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Tony Chan. With me today is Astik Khan, who is the 5G network architect for NTT Docomo. Astik, thank you for joining us. We're here today at the OPNFB event in uh, Beijing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why Docomo is here at this event with the open source community? Well, Docomo is a founding member of OPNFB, um, and we are running two requirement projects in OPNFB. Uh, those are OPNFB Promise and Doctors. So apart from the OPNFB platform itself, uh, we are here to fill out gaps in between our desired specification and what open source um, solutions are providing these days. One example is, is OpenStack. We are using OpenStack in our commercial network. So there are a few features that are missing, which are necessary for, for telco operations. And uh, we are developing those, those new features uh, in OPNFB and as well as in OpenStack. Okay, and what's the actual involvement of, of Docomo in these projects? Uh, are you have, do you have engineers working on it? Are you contributing code? And, and uh, we have engineers um, involved, but uh, we primarily work on the feature design and clarifying the requirements so that the open source community can understand. Um, and uh, we also help and participate in day-to-day -day operation in OPNV itself. Uh, the actual code development and contribution in the upstream community that, uh, that is done by different participants in the community from different places. And that's the beauty of open source community, in my view. Okay. And uh, what's driving these uh, requirements that you mentioned uh, within Docomo? The driving is uh, we already uh, commercially rolled out world's first multi-vendor it's an MV based uh, commercial system which is running virtualized EPC, the mobile core network of 4G. Um, through our operation of last one year, we already found out, as I mentioned before, uh, some of the features are missing, which you require for, for telco operation. For example, fault management is a, such a critical feature. Uh, we also require, let's say, resource reservation, resource guarantee for a particular service or mobile nodes. So as we are quite aware of those missing features. We are primarily here to fill out those gaps and develop the features so that we can use a complete open source solution in our network rather than filling those out by, by customized uh, Docomo only solutions. Okay, so um, obviously everybody's talking about 5G and, and as somebody who's actively working in that, in that development, um, how, do you, how do you see the open source community and you know, network functions virtualization uh, what's their role in 5G? 5G, especially the core network part, of course, I mean, as you can imagine, a particular generation of a mobile network is, has two parts, so the radio part and the core part. So the radio part for 5G, it, is, it will provide us with more than 10 gigs of, of wireless bandwidth. Uh, for the core part, our vision and the way we are designing it, we, we are basing ourselves a lot on NFV and SDN solutions. We are focusing on a concept, what we call network slicing, which is an end-to-end -end virtualized network um, consisting of NFB and SDN, SDN um, together. Um, so as uh, we have already commercialized an NFB system, and there is the monostack, operational monostack uh, already running and overseeing the day-to-day -day network operation, we will build on top of that for our 5G operations as well as the network slicing concept I just mentioned. So um, NFV, SDN, Mano, these all will have to support 5G services as well as open up interfaces necessary for 5G specific operation system that will come into play later. Okay, I um, understand you're also involved in the standard, standardization of 5G core networks. Um, is that standard being developed with open source and uh, I guess virtualization in mind? Uh, to, to a great extent, yes, because the world is aware of NFV SDN and uh, their specification. So in standard, what you do is you, you develop a consensus on a common uh, technology or, or solutions. So uh, through the operation so far, we are aware of what uh, different open source solutions are capable of, what their technical specifications are. And as I, as I was saying before, 5G will base itself, will base itself on NFB and SDN. Many of these present technical specifications are being considered as potential solutions in different SDOs. Okay. And 
do you see any challenges in, in the standardization process for 5G? There are definitely challenges because the network is getting more and more complex. If you take, let's say, network slicing as an example, so far we are running a monolithic network, network all services on a single network, but it was still a single network. But if I create, let's say, 10 different network slices, it becomes 10 more networks. So I have to run and operate 10 networks simultaneously. There is a lot of complexity. How to handle the complexity from the management perspective is a significant challenge we have in, in, in standardization. Okay, uh, coming back to the OPNFB event here, uh, as the representative from NTT Docomo in uh, OPNFB, what is your role here? Uh, well, we are showing what we have achieved so far in OPNFB Doctor and Promise. Uh, there is a demo booth, and uh, we are showing for the first time how an operator or anyone interested can perform resource reservation in a cloud. We are also showing how you can automate a maintenance procedure by using OPNAP Doctor. Doctor was made to address fault management, but you can use the same techniques for, for maintenance operation as well. So that's what we are showing and uh, promoting our achievement so that others pick it up, use that in, in their network, um, as well as uh, picking up what other projects and the community as a whole has, has uh, developed and delivering so that we can use those in our network in the future. Okay, uh, last question would be, uh, with OP NFB, that's one open source uh, effort or project. There's many other ones uh, in the community with many, many different, uh, targeting many different parts of the network. Uh, how does NTD Docomo kind of engage with so many communities and, or manage them? Right. Well, uh, I have already mentioned OpenStack. We are involved in OpenStack because OPNFB primarily doesn't develop code itself. So if you need to develop new features, you have to go to the relevant upstream community. And for us, the upstream community is OpenStack. So we are involved there. There are other OpenStack, uh, I'm sorry, open source projects like OSM, um, ONAP is coming in. There are ODL, different SDN controllers. Uh, we primarily focus on the projects that has direct relevance to what we have already deployed. As I mentioned, we have, run, we have a <clears throat> NFB system running on XNFB architecture and specs. So we primarily target those, but as we are moving into the 5G era, where uh, network automation, automation of the management stack, uh, automation of day-to-day -day network operation is a very critical topic. Um, so we will go to the relevant uh, SDOs as well as open source organization which will address the automation issue. There is always an argument uh, of like uh, SDO or open source. So my view is it's not SDO or open source. They can uh, complement each other. So when we are de developing something in an open source project and if there is an already existing standard, it is wiser to follow the standard because it makes the consequent integration and interoperability tests much easier for an operator. And if an open source project through their implementation finds out that there's something wrong in the standards, they can always fix it, revise it. And OP and FB Promise project did correct some HCNFB specification. So I believe a, a healthy feedback loop in between these two different activities will help the operators and the industry quite a lot. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.